Hi, and thanks for joining me in this course. This is a very applied course. In fact, we'll jump right into code and explain a bit of theory as we go along. Now, this course is for you if you want to learn machine learning and deep learning through code. In my experience, machine learning courses cover a lot of theory, they cover a lot of math, they explain the models in detail, but at the end, they leave you hanging because you cannot really apply your knowledge to solve your problems. And that is why we want to focus on the practical side of machine learning. So we'll start with some basics of machine learning and we'll move over to some of the very high level APIs which are used in research and in production. We specifically are going to be covering Keras. So Keras is our focus in this course primarily because it is an extremely friendly yet powerful tool. It sits on top of a lot of different very powerful frameworks, for instance, TensorFlow, CNTK, Theano. It's also very easy to use. It has a lot of adoption. Uh, in fact, it's uh, now the front end to TensorFlow uh, in a way. It's an API in the form of tf.keras. So TensorFlow is from Google and it has a lot of people following it. And Keras essentially was, it came before TensorFlow and it has been adopted by the uh, Google people as an API for their front end. Now, uh, this uh, tf.keras, once you cover this course, you should be able to use tf.keras uh, as just as you would use uh, Keras directly in this course. So we're going to cover that, but we'll be starting not with Keras at first, but we'll be starting with scikit-learn. Now scikit-learn is uh, another API for machine learning. It's not for deep learning, it's only for machine learning. But the idea is that we can start with scikit-learn immediately. For Keras, we need to cover a little bit of theory, so we'll get to that in one of our future videos. But we want to start with scikit-learn, and uh, the good thing is that a lot of the concepts that we cover in this video, which we'll start immediately with code, you should be able to use these concepts even when we move on to Keras. So this is not a waste of your time. Uh, it's going to be most of the concepts that are very visible over here will be very useful when we move on to Keras. So it's uh, it's not a it's not an uh, optional kind of video that it's something extra that we're doing. This is to get our hands wet really quickly so that we know what we're doing and then we'll move on to some of the more interesting features. So let's uh, immediately go ahead and uh, open up try.jupyter.org. This is so that we can start coding without having to uh, install any of the Python or any of the other prerequisites. So we go to try.jupyter.org and it's going to open up a, a workspace just for us. So it's a new workspace. It has been set up for us. It has a lot of files over here, but we're not really concerned with those. We want to go over here to new and click on Python 3. Now, we do assume that you are somewhat comfortable with Python. I don't have a course right now for Python, but I'm planning on that. Uh, please do let me know if you want, if you would want me to create a Python course uh, specifically for this purpose. But uh, uh, for now, you, you just need to have some basic understanding of Python in order to start with this. We're going to cover the installation of Python and how to set everything up in a later video. Right now, we're using this freely available try.jupyter.org to work with what is called a Jupyter Notebook. So if you're not familiar with Jupyter Notebook, let me give you a really quick overview. So when you uh, click on a, a new Python 3 Notebook, you get this over here. Over here, you can go ahead and call it uh, New Notebook or whatever you want to call it. So this is renamed. And uh, what we want to do over here is enter some Python code. For instance, let's say x equal to 15. And you want to hold down shift and hit enter. And what it's going to do is take this code and it's going to execute it for you. If some output is produced, it will show it below over here. For instance, you can say print x, shift, hold shift and press enter. And it's going to execute this line of code and output the value for you. So this is a very good way of uh, working with Python code. It's very good for experimentation. So that's what we're going to be using uh, throughout the course. So you can go back to a previous cell. So these values are called cells. You can um, change this to, for instance, some text and uh, go over here, call it markdown, hold shift, hit enter, and this will be a markdown text. Uh, what we want to do is essentially start with a very basic cell and uh, work with our case study. So we're going to delete all of these. We're going to 
cover a case study for uh, recognizing digits right so handwritten digits this is uh, one of those uh, toy examples those uh, which are taught for machine learning and it's a very interesting example because it lets us see the whole pipeline without having to understand the intricacies of a specific data set so what we're going to do is we're going to start with scikit-learn by importing from sklearn import data sets so that imports uh, the data sets module for us and we're, what we're going to do is we're going to load up the digits data set using data sets dot load digits now this is going to load the whole data set in this variable it's a slightly uh, smaller data set you can take a look at uh, what it houses so you can say digits dot data and it shows you what it has so it's really important that you understand your data if you look at it over here it's not very clear what this data is how many digits we have uh, what does our data look like so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a different type of representation for this now this is the image representation of the digit so where do these zeros come from so these are the pixel values for this image so the top left corner is going to be over here and this is a zero because this is completely white so as it gets closer and closer to black it gets closer and closer to a one value Right. So that is essentially what your uh, image gets translated to in terms of mathematics. So this is what your image looks like when it is turned into a matrix. And this is what it's trying to show you, except it doesn't look like that. And it's really important that when you're learning machine learning uh, and you're uh, trying to code it, you should be very comfortable with your data, at least your input data. So what you want to do is you want to go over here and say print digits dot data zero so that you can see what the what the individual data point or one digit looks like so this is what it looks like now this is really weird because this is a one dimensional vector so here what we had was that we have a matrix so this should be two dimensional but this over here is one dimensional so the point of that is that this is going to be reshaped what does reshape mean so currently this has a particular shape and that is the other thing that you must understand when you're trying to apply machine learning you need to understand the shapes of your matrices so for instance uh, our digits dot data zero dot shape that is how you take a look at the shape it has a shape of 64 comma so that means that it's essentially returning a tuple so it only has one dimension and it has 64 numbers so it's essentially an 8 by 8 matrix Right, so 8 pixels by 8 pixels matrix and that turns it into a 64 right so you can go ahead and reshape it but we don't really want to do that right now so the second thing that you need to take a look at is the target of your data so remember this digits dot data zero we're going to take a look at digits dot target zero so what is the zero elements target so its target is zero essentially what we're saying it is that this whole thing corresponds to the handwritten digits zero Right, so what we have here is a data zero which is 110 digit and this is the target which is uh, the known value of this digit so we know that this whole pixel combination when it combines gives us the zero shape for instance this one over here gives us a one because of these specific values right? so make sure you understand this part before uh, you proceed ahead with the other stuff okay now let's take a look, take a look at uh, digits dot target the last 10 one last 10 targets so we have a 5 we have a 4 two eights, 4 9 0 8 9 and 8 this 8 is going to be special uh, in a little while uh, but what you want to do is you want to make sure that you understand digit dot targets dot shape so it has a shape of 1797 so we have 100 1797 targets so we better have the same number of digits so we have this number of digits where each digit has 64 values right so make sure you understand this uh, let's explain this again so that uh, we're sure we understand it so we have 107 uh, 1797 data points so these are our images and these are their corresponding targets so they need to be equal now within one image we have 64 pixel values that is 8 cross 8 
right? So that is what our data looks like. Now what we want to do is essentially learn to predict the class. So what is a class? A class is essentially data set divided into different groups. So because we have digits over here, we have classes from zero to nine. So an, an image of a, of a digit may belong to class zero if it has a zero in it or to one up to nine. Right? So that's what we want to learn. What we want to do is train the machine using some data, some of the data that we have, and then hold some of the data back so that later on when the machine claims that it has learned to predict data, predict what the image corresponds to, we show it some image that it has not previously seen. Because as you know, the machines, machines are really good at memorizing stuff. So if you show it all the data points, then it's going to simply learn what the exact pixel values correspond to. What we want to do is show it some pixels, right? In a way, we show it and we tell it what the image is. For instance, we show it the image of a zero and tell it that this is a zero. Then we show it a one and tell it that this is a one so on and so forth. So we're going to show it 1796 values. We're going to hold one back and then we're, we're going to teach it what each of the image corresponds to. Once we have that, we're going to take out our one image that we have held back and then present it as an exam to the machine to understand whether it has learned it. Right? So if the machine really has learned to predict the classes, it should be able to predict this new, uh, this new image that it has not previously seen. Right, so that's our uh, that's what our uh, model is going to be, what our pipeline is going to be. So we're going to train on most of our data, right? Then the machine is going to claim that uh, it has learned the uh, the task of predicting the images, and then what we're going to do is we're going to test it out, right? So we're going to give it an exam to make sure that it has not just memorized the data but really has learned it, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to create a classifier. Now a classifier is, uh, let's call it a piece of code for now. A classifier is going to be a model or a piece of code that essentially learns, right? So we first train the classifier. So what we have been calling machine up until now, that is now going to be a classifier. So a classifier has to come from an algorithm. So we're going to pick one and then we show it some example images. And then finally what we do is we go ahead and we test it once it claims that it has learned to predict stuff. So in the next video, we're going to learn to predict the classes. For now, we need to make sure that we understand the shapes of the data. Now this is going to come back again and again and again. And this is one of the uh, main stumbling points for newbies when they want to start with machine learning code. Understanding the shapes is very important. So make sure you understand these five lines of code. This is not a large piece of code, but make sure you understand it really well before you proceed ahead.